Hi guys! As you may already know, in all of my long hair tutorials, for extra length and volume, I'm using clipping hair extensions. Many of you ask me how do I blend them in so well, so today I'll share with you my blending tips and answer other frequently asked questions. As you can tell, I have medium length hair, and because it's very thin, there is no point in growing it any longer. The longer it gets, the thinner it looks, so I just like to keep it past my shoulders. There is not much you can do with a ponytail that thin, so in one of my previous videos I have already shown you how to create a voluminous high ponytail with clipping extensions. The application scheme is quite different from the one I'll be showing you today. Glam time hair extensions that I use in my videos have truly made a revolution in my hair life. Their length and volume brought me all the hairstyling opportunities I could only dream about. They consist of multiple wefts of different widths, and they're attached to your own hair with very small but secure snapping clips. Since you put them in only when you need to and always take them out when you go to bed or wash your hair, they do not damage your hair like permanent extensions. Multiple wefts ensure even distribution of hair, making such extensions blend with your own hair way better than those that come in a single piece. They're also much more comfortable to wear. Depending on whether your own hair is thin or thick, you may need to attach the extensions differently. I'll firstly show you how to blend them in with thin hair like my own. To avoid tangling, which might in turn cause shedding, always brush the extensions before and after wearing them. Prepare the first three clip wefts by snapping its clips open. Using a red tail comb or your finger, make a horizontal parting right above your hairline and secure the top section off your way. I always recommend to start as low as possible at the back of your head. Place the weft right under your parting. Starting from the middle clip, catch your hair into each clip and snap it shut. Keep the weft well stretched so that there are no gaps. Then release the top section and make another horizontal parting right above the first one. Prepare the following three clip wefts and clip it under the new parting. Some people like to tease and hairspray their hair before attaching the extensions, but I never find it necessary with glam time extensions. I just press each clip relatively hard against my head to catch enough hair and ensure a good grip. Properly attached, the clips are so sturdy that I can even curl the extensions with a flat iron. Now it's time to create one more parting and attach the widest four clip wefts. If you're using a 160 gram set with an additional 4 clip weft, you'll need to clip it in right above the first one. In case of very thin hair like my own, you want to attach all the wefts, leaving no gaps between them. So the partings that you make should be really narrow. This way you'll have enough hair left to properly cover the extensions. At this point I'm done with the back of my head, and now I'll take care of the sides. I part my hair once again and attach a 2 clip weft one inch away from the hairline. The remaining two one-clip wefts go right above it. Then I repeat the same process on the other side. After that I only brush my hair with the extensions and that's it. If your hair isn't quite as straight as mine, you may need to flat iron the ends of your own hair. Normally it's sufficient to only glide over the area where your hair meets the extensions. This application scheme works for downdos and side-swept braids. As long as your own hair is directed downward or diagonally, it will cover the extensions perfectly. But for some hairstyles, you may want to use different schemes. For example, if you plan to bring the hair from the sides into a half up to at the back, or wear a headband, you could completely skip one and two clip wefts or attach all of them at the back of your head. Or if you go for a deep side parting, you could place all one and two clip wefts on the same side of your head, the one that is further away from the parting. Now if your own hair is thick, you want to attach the extension slightly differently. You want to leave wider gaps between the wefts so that the top weft is as high as possible. The goal is to keep as little hair as possible lying over the top weft, just as much as it takes to cover it. This way the ends of your own hair won't stand out against the extensions. What haircuts blend best with extensions? Well, blunt cut lines can be very challenging to blend in, so the more layers you have, the better. If you don't like layers, you can at least feather out the ends of your own hair. Another option is to get the extensions cut and layered to match your own haircut. For the best blending results, it's recommended that the top layer of your hair is at least chin length. If that's the case, you'd need to get a 160 gram set and probably have the extensions layered in order to hide the line where your own hair ends. 
Otherwise, you can choose to wear hairstyles that keep your short hair away from your face. This way it won't stand out against the extensions. So here's just an idea on such a hairstyle. Another option would be to wear a headband. Glamtime extensions that I use are made of human hair, and it means that you can style them just like your own hair. Normally I go for overnight hair curling techniques, such as braids and hair rollers. But for special occasions when I want to look extra glamorous, I do curl it with a curling iron. I'm going to show you how I do it. I close the iron around the middle of my strand and roll it up to about an inch from the scalp. I leave it over there for a couple of seconds. Then I slightly open the clamp and start to pull the iron away from the scalp, letting the hair glide through it. I alternate the directions of curls as I go, but I make sure to curl the front sections away from my face. Curled hair always looks shorter yet fuller than straight hair, and I personally consider 18 inches a perfect length for hair extensions. Anything longer than that looks too long when straight, while anything shorter looks too short when curled. Once my hair has cooled down, I can shake it near the roots to open up the curls and get a more natural look. So this is how my curls turned out. Another great thing about clipping extensions is that you can use them to create instant highlights or lowlights in your hair without commitment and hair damage. In one of my previous videos I've shown how to do it, so feel free to check it out. If you take good care of extensions, they should last you up to a year. They do not get dirty as quickly as your natural hair, so you only have to wash them every 10 to 20 wears with mild products for dry and damaged hair. Washing them more often might shorten their lifespan, removing the moisture that the hair extensions originally have, but cannot receive from the scalp like our own hair. I like to add some hair conditioner to the shampoo, and I also deep condition my extensions for a couple of hours every time I wash them. I always let them dry naturally and apply a heat protectant whenever I style them with heat. You can always send a photo of your hair to Glamtime team asking for a professional color matching. Glamtime extensions are made with multi-tone adept coloring system, which allows them to blend well even if your own hair shade is slightly different. Go for the closest match that is lighter than your own hair. If necessary, the extensions can be colored to match your own hair exactly, but it's not recommended to bleach them, only tone them down. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have other questions in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching! Bye-bye!